hopefully everybody can hear this video. Um, if you don't have sound, I'm hoping people will be able to figure out how to get their sound working. Um, the uh, lesson we're going to do today is uh, Lesson 2.5, that's Chapter 2, Section 5, in the Geometry uh, Note-Taking Guide called the Study Guide, Chapter 2. Um, this section is on constructing uh, algebraic proofs. So a lot of what we're going to be doing um, when we do algebra is stuff that you've seen before, but we're going to be using it um, in a little different way than you've done before. But usually this lesson um, uses familiar ideas and uh, people are pretty comfortable with it when they see it. Um, we're going to be memorizing uh, a lot of these things called properties. And uh, properties are rules that we're going to write down as reasons for why we do things. Um, so it's going to be really important um, for you to memorize uh, the different types of properties and what they're called and be able to recognize them uh, when they occur. Uh, the addition property says that if you add the same thing on both sides, that you still have a true statement. So for example, if you took, um, oops, this is B and C. If you took the left side of the equation and you added C, and you took the right side of the equation and you added the same amount, C, that you still have an equation that's true. Now we've been doing this as we've solved equations for a long time. You know how to solve an equation, you know that adding something, uh, some element, some number on the same, both sides, um, continues to be a true uh, statement of equality. So you could probably imagine that the subtraction property basically says if you subtract any single thing on both sides, as long as it's the same thing and you do it on each side, then it remains a statement of equality. Those things are still true and equal. Um, multiplication property, you multiply the same thing on both sides, you still have an equation. Division property, if you divide both sides by something, you still have an equation. And finally, the substitution property means that if A, E is the same as B, that a can be replaced by B. In an equation or an expression. Usually we use expressions for substitution. Okay. Um, the other one is the distributive property. You may recognize this from Algebra 1. If we have a multiplying element on the outside of parentheses, we can multiply first here, a times b, and we carry over the plus sign, and then we multiply the a times the last element, c, last term, uh, variable there, and so we have a statement that this and this are true. They're both true, and they uh, basically are the distributive property. And you could either start here and go there, or start here and go there. Either way, that's the distributive property. Um, so, uh, how do we use these? Well, basically we're going to be starting to construct something called the proof today. And on the left side of the proof, we're actually going to be kind of making logical statements. Um, here we're going to be making algebraic statements of equation. And on the right side, we're going to be giving reasons why we can do what we're doing. So. If I gave you this equation right here and I asked you, what would you do first? Um, some of you would say, well, I see that this is five times the quantity uh, 2x minus 1. And so your first instinct might be to use the distributive property and say, okay, I know I can multiply here and here and get 10x minus 5. And that will be something I can say that's also true. So this is my statement number two. And my reason for that is the distributive property tells me I can do that. What can we do now? Well, I'm going to subtract 9x on both sides. What did I just do? I subtracted the same thing on both sides. That is called the subtraction property. So, when I have my conclusion that 1x minus 5 is the same as 2, the reason I can go from here to here, that the state that if this is true then that is true, is because there's such a thing as the 
subtraction property. And then finally to solve for x, I would add 5 on both sides and I would be able to then conclude that x is the same as 7. How did I go from here to here? Well, that's the addition property. I know because of the addition property that I can add the same amount or the same term on both sides and I will get another statement of something that is true. So this is called a two column proof. You can see that I have a column of um, statements here and I have a column of statements there, hence the two column proof. It starts with a statement that you know is true. That's called the given when something is already given to you as something true. Um, we start with that and then from there we try to make logical conclusions um, down the page. Now, as I said before, it's not always just going to be simple algebra. We're going to use our algebraic um, skills in new ways. So let's see what we can do with that. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> Now there's three new properties other than the ones that you already know and again I'm assuming that because you know how to solve equations that you know the properties on the first page. You know to add something on both sides, you know the distributive property, all that stuff. But um, these are three new properties um, and they're very very important to rem memorize. The reflexive property, the symmetric property, and the transitive property. We're going to be using these properties for weeks and weeks and perhaps even months. We're going to refer back to these properties. So it's, these are going to be concepts that you're going to have to use over and over and over. Um, and you definitely uh, need to know them. The faster you know them, the better off you'll be. So the reflexive property. Um, this is the one we don't use as much, but basically it says that for any number, that number is equal to itself. For any line segment, the measure of the line segment will always be the same as itself. And for any angle, uh, the measure of that angle will always be the same as itself. Now it seems pretty obvious that something will be the same as itself, but every once in a while we need to make that statement. And um, we'll, you'll see that on, on the next page uh, when we get over here. Um, that. Um, it's actually helpful to make that statement every once in a while. Okay, now these are the ones we use a little bit more often, the symmetric property and the transitive property. The symmetric property basically says that if a equals b, then b equals a for any two numbers, a and b. Or if the measure of line segment ab is equal to the measure of line segment cd, then line segment CD's measure must be equal to line segment AB's measure. It's the same thing, just backwards. Or for angles, if the measure of angle A equals the measure of angle B, then the measure of angle B equals the measure of angle A. Now there's something that's kind of obvious, very logical. And then finally the transitive property. The transitive property says that for any real numbers, if A equals B, and b equals c, then we can conclude that a equals c. We thought about this general th kind of thing with the law of syllogism. Do you remember that? Law of syllogism said that um, uh, like you, you would put two statements together, like um, if I work then I will be able to make money and if I make money then I'll be able to pay my bills. So um, it's two statements that kind of have a connecting concept. So again, if I work, then I make money, and if I make money, then I'll be able to pay my bills. So you can start with the original concept of if you're working, and then conclude the final conclusion that you'll be able to pay your bills, because in the middle you have um, making money to connect those two things. So you can see that the connecting idea here is real number B. If A equals B and B equals C, then A must equal C. We can start with the original um, hypothesis and then jump to the final conclusion. That is a true statement. Or if AB equals CD, line segment measures, and CD equals EF, you can see the connecting concept here is CD, the measure of line segment CD. Then if we start with 
line segment AB's measure, then that must be equal to the measure of line segment EF. We can actually kind of jump to the end, start with this hypothesis and end with that conclusion. And then finally, if the measure of angle A equals the measure of angle B, and the measure of angle B equals the measure of angle C, then the measure of angle A would have to be equal to, from a conclusion, measure of angle C. So it's not exactly the same as the law of syllogism because the law of syllogism has to do with if-then sta statements, um, and this one has kind of two statements and then your conclusion, but um, it's very similar in its structure. So I always think of them as, as being kind of the same thing, the law of syllogism and the transitive property. Now, there's one more um, postulate that you're gonna need to know, so I'm gonna write that here in this space, and that is the addition postulate. Now, keep in mind that on the previous page, we learned something called the addition property. The addition property is not the same as the addition postulate. The addition property has to do with equations, statements of equality, and when we add, when we can add the same thing on both sides, that's called the addition property. Now, the addition postulate is different. It says that if you have two, if you have a whole element of something and you cut it into two pieces and you add those two pieces together, you get the total again. So there are a couple different ways to, to do this. Um, you could do an addition postulate for segments called the segment addition postulate which states that if you have a line segment and right here this length is A and this length is B and the length of the entire thing is C that section A plus section B must be the same as the whole thing all the way across, section C. So part plus part equals total. That's the addition postulate for segments. Now we have another one for angles called the angle addition postulate. Um, I don't need the word addition in there. Okay. So if you have a few angles I'm going to call this angle 1, and this is angle 2, and the whole thing from here down to there is angle 3. Then um, the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 must give you the whole thing all the way across the measure of angle 3. So that is the addition postulate. This is the segment addition postulate and this is the angle addition postulate. Two parts of the whole thing will add up to the whole thing. Part plus part equals total. Or piece plus piece, piece equals whole, basically. So, also a very important postulate to know. Okay, so you can see here we have a line segment and they're telling us to get us started that the distance from A to B right here is the same as the distance from B to C right there. And remember these tick marks tell us that. They tell us that this segment and this segment are the same amount. Now, what did we do here? It says that AC is equal to AB plus BC. Do you see how AC is the total distance all the way across? That's AC. And AB is the left-hand side part and BC is the right-hand side part. So basically statement number two is saying the total is the same as the sum of the two parts. Well that is this. It's the segment addition postulate. 
So that's what I'm going to write over here for the reason that they can state that. Segment addition postulate. Okay. Well, what did they do? This is the same, equals is the same, AB is the same, the plus is the same. The only thing that's different is that BC was taken out and AB was put in. Do you see that? Everything on line two and line three are the same except for the last piece. Now, why were they able to do that? Well, because up here, when AB is equal to BC, when two things are the same, you can take one out and put one in. That is called substituting. For the reason being, the substitution property says we can do that. And then finally, if you add these two together um, and you get 2AB, I'm just going to say that that was simplification. that allowed us to do that. We, we weren't really stating something completely different, we're just saying that we simplified to get there uh, by adding the like terms. This page is a little bit more complicated. As you can see, we're talking about measures of angles. And they started by telling us that the measure of AEB, this one right there, is equal to the measure of CED, that one right there. So what they want us to show eventually, as our final statement, is that AEC, this one right here, is equal to BED, this one right here. Okay, so how do we show that? Hmm. Well, they've already written out the proof for us. We really just have to come up with reasons why they're doing what they're doing. So let's see. First they say that AEC is the same as AEB plus BEC. Well, basically they're saying this angle right here is the same as adding the two pieces together. Well, isn't that the angle addition postulate? When we say that part plus part equals total. Let's see what they're doing down here. BED, so this angle right here, is equal to BEC, that's this one, plus CED, that's that one. So again, they're saying part plus part equals total. Okay, so it seems to me that both of these, uh, line two and line three, are true because of the angle addition postulate. Now, this one's a little weird. It simply says that the measure of angle BEC, that's the center one, is exactly the same as itself. Huh. Well. What's that rule when something is the same as itself? That's called the reflexive property. So that's the reason I'm going to state. Okay, so I think what they did on line 5 is they seem to have taken the original statement of given truth that angle AEB and angle CED are equal and on both sides, they added angle BEC. Oh, I wrote that on the wrong line, didn't I? Oh, for crying out loud. Let me back up a second. This is the reflexive property, but it should have been written on line four. There we go. Okay, um, back to this one. So they took the original equation up here, and on both sides, they added BEC. So when we take an equation and on both sides we add the same thing, that is just basic algebra. We take an equation, we add the same thing on both sides, that's called the addition property. Okay, 
So remember the difference between the addition postulate and the addition property. The addition postulate is stating that two parts add up to be a total part, a total whole, as opposed to the addition property, which is an equation that you take both sides and you add the same thing on both sides. So they're very different concepts. Okay, so this AEB plus BEC is this medium size angle up here, angle AEC, if you put these two together. And this side, BEC plus CED, is this medium size angle when you add these two parts together. And how do we conclude that that is true? Well, AEB plus BEC is right here. Do you see that? And that is the same as the measure of angle AEC. So on the left side, they took this out and instead they replaced it with this. Because this is an equation and this is supposed to be the same as the sum of these two, we can do any substitution we want. We could have taken out this and put in that if we needed to, but in this logical step-by-step -step process, it was helpful to take this and write it more simply as that. And then on this side, uh, BEC plus CED, those two together add up to angle BED. So we simplified this side down to just BED. And because we took something out and put something else in from a previous statement of equality, that's called the substitution property. There you go, that's our proof. And I'm going to skip this one because this is a pretty long lesson already.